in the middle. Lucas, uh, what do you expect out of Lance today? Um, I expect Lance to go out there and do his thing. I know that he prepares about as well as anybody in this league. He's put up great numbers all year, so um, just expect him to go out and obviously give his best effort to give us the best chance to win today. On your left in the middle. Lucas, you were kind of able to get that first playoff start out of the way in the wild card game last year. How does that kind of help you prepare for tomorrow and maybe have a little bit less pressure going into the game? Yeah, I w I'm definitely not as nervous uh, as I was last year. Um, you know, the nerves kind of ended up working in my favor, kept me focused. But yeah, I mean, having experience in, in anything is going to make you more prepared for the next time you do it. So, uh, you know, that was a good one. I'm looking forward to having another good one tomorrow. James in the middle. Lucas, you've had success against the Astros in the past. You've had success in this building. Does that have any carryover or, or help to uh, tomorrow, or is it just a whole new ball game? Um, yeah, I mean, I can draw from experience. Uh, I like this ballpark. I like this mound. Uh, but uh, at the same time, every single game's different. So, you know, you, a pitcher can go out there with, you know, good stuff, bad stuff, somewhere in between. So, you got to make sure that. Kind of like what I said about Lance, uh, keeping my preparation as sound as possible and uh, being ready to go tomorrow. That's all that matters. Towards the back on your left. Thank you. Lucas, I, uh, can, can you illuminate us at all in regard to the, just the process of, of, of how the number one versus number two starter is determined? Like, did, did you get a chance to make your case verbally? And then, and then how was it just sort of interpreted to you you know how, how it shook out. Um, yeah, that that's not that was never my decision at all. Uh, that's uh, determined by our coaching staff and, and front office. Uh, that's all strategic. So I'm not really going to like go into details on that. But uh, for me personally, I'm going to pitch. Uh, whether it's game one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter to me. Uh, that's my day. I'm going to take the ball and, and, and do my absolute best. That's all I care about. Back left. It, it looks, what do you like about the mound and the ballpark? And as far as the Astros, you know, just what do you think about the matchup, how, how you match up against them? Uh, it's hard to, like, be specific on the mound itself. I just kind of like the feel of it. Uh, at least from what I remember. I, I haven't pitched here in a while. Uh, and then any time it's a ballpark with a roof, I enjoy it, air conditioning. <laughs> Tyler. Lucas, we talked about the, the value of your experience um, last year and the teams, but Tony has more experience than anybody in a uniform. Is there anything he's imparted to you guys or shared about the playoff journey and, and you know how to navigate it? Yeah, I, uh, we, we've talked a lot uh, leading up to the playoffs. Uh, we've had meetings. Uh, he's definitely, with his wealth of experience, uh, talked to us about uh, preparation, talked to us about um, you know, obviously the differences between playoff baseball and regular season baseball and, and uh, how fun it can be. So. Yeah, again, like, I don't want to be giving away stuff. So I'll leave it at that. What, is there anything in general that you learned from him um, this season or that how did he match up to whatever you expected him to be like as a manager? Um, I mean, it kind of started with the first conversation I had with him in uh, the off season, right when he was hired. Uh, I was expecting. You know, Tony La Russa, Hall of Fame manager, to be very strict, be very uh, like, I'm in charge, like, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and I was very surprised when, like, in our first conversation, he told me that 
you know, I'm, co I'm coming over, this is your guys' team, and I'm going to earn your respect. I'm going to work every day to earn your respect starting in day one of spring training. And he's done that. And uh, that was kind of, you know, that kind of showed me, like, the type of person he is, not just baseball manager, but, uh, yeah, just a great person. So it's a pleasure to be playing for him this year. Scott. Hey, Lucas, you've talked about this, and your teammates have talked about this, but do you still kind of marvel at what Jose has gone through this year to kind of, you know, and still have 117 RBIs, 30 home runs, and still have the production that he usually has? I mean, he's been pretty much beat up since spring training, but keeps going out there. I mean, that's, that's who Jose is. I mean, he'll give anything for this team, uh, anything for, you know, all the guys that play alongside him. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I can't say I'm surprised at all. Uh, he has been through a lot this year, uh, obviously going through stuff right now. So uh, it's he's got some of the most heart I've ever seen in a baseball player. And it's such a pleasure to be teammates with him and, and be able to watch him do what he does. Back left. Uh, do you, if you could sort of analyze it if you don't mind. Is this a better White Sox team this year than, than the one that ran out for the playoffs last year? Do you feel that? And, and, and what, if anything, is different about the feeling you guys carry into the postseason? Yeah, I'd say we're definitely a better team than last year. Um, I'd say talent level pretty similar, but I'll give the, give the edge to this year's team. Um, and then I'd say focus is higher. I'd say the experience is higher for all of us, uh, especially a bunch of the guys that we acquired through trades and free agent signings. Um, and it's just, you know, another year. Uh, we, we finally got that postseason experience last year. It left us wanting more. And so now we're very hungry. And, you know, we're here to, to do as well as we can. The left in the middle. You, you had the remarkable turnaround a few years ago. And this season, too, there was a turnaround, not as drastic, maybe not the same, but um, how did it happen for you this year? How would you kind of summarize uh, first half compared to the second half and what's different? Uh, I think that in the first half, uh, there were just times where I wasn't really in sync uh, mechanically, uh, focus-wise. Uh, I let some starts just get away from me early. Uh, and. It, during the All-Star break, I, I really took some time to kind of like refresh, and then I came back uh, a lot more focused, a lot more focused on each and every start, my preparation, um, you know, I mean, top to bottom, scouting reports, uh, knowing uh, what I should be doing in any given situation, how I should be pitching. Uh, and then tightening up some things, especially the breaking balls. And that definitely made a huge difference. Two right here in the middle. Lucas, uh, the team went out, the front office went out and got Lance this offseason because it seemed like something that you guys needed. What has he meant to this, to this team and this pitching staff this year? He's meant so much, it's kind of hard to put into words. Uh, he's been a leader. Uh, both through example and uh, through sometimes, uh, you know, verbally. Uh, he's helped me out tremendously. He's helped uh, Carlos out. He's helped Dylan out. Um, he's just been a wonderful clubhouse presence. Uh, he's super funny. So that's always welcomed in our clubhouse. Uh, and yeah, I mean, He's just his competitiveness when he's out there. It's really, really fun to watch and fun to learn from as a younger pitcher. So I think that that, along with obviously how well he's pitched this year, it's been such a great acquisition for us. James, Tony spoke yesterday about a willingness to use some of his starters uh, on short rest if need be in, in series and going forward. Is that something you've ever done in your career? And, and What's kind of the adjustment in the process to, to handle that? Um, 
I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever pitched on short rest in my career, but I mean, at this point in the season, I don't care. Like if I'm pitching three days in a row, I'll do it. Whatever the team needs for us to, to be able to win games. Uh, I've done a good job this year personally of, you know, keeping my body right, keeping my body fresh. I feel really good going into the playoffs. Uh, so yeah, again, like, None of this stuff is my call. It's it's whatever's asked of me. I'm going to be willing to do it. In the back on your right. Lucas, was there any difference this year in returning to a normal workload for a pitcher after a truncated season last year? Um, I didn't, I didn't really find much of one because uh, last year spring training was canceled, uh, went home. And I got to work immediately, uh, kind of building my workload up, even though they weren't like real MLB games, but like going out and doing uh, live bullpen sessions, things like that, to where I was like logging innings. Uh, so, you know, last year I finished with, I don't know, 80 innings pitched, but in reality it was a lot, a lot more work than that to prepare for this year. To where this year, like I said, I, I, I've been feeling pretty good and. Uh, been able to chug along pretty good throughout the season. Um, I know that everyone's different. You know, some guys have dealt with injury. We've definitely had a lot of that this year. Uh, maybe the the different workloads have something to do with it, but I'm not a medical expert, so I don't know. Any last ones for Lucas? All right. Good luck tomorrow. Cool. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.